The interview with Tom Bradby um, started with a very moving passage. It was Prince Harry talking about um, the death of his mother, Diana, and the circumstances of the crash. Um, no one could you know, not be moved by um, his, his account of this you know, at the age of 12. Then he goes into detail talking about how his father, then Prince Charles, told him about his mother's death, how he couldn't believe it, how Charles sort of touched his hand, but never hugged him. That's one thing that Harry really picked up on, that his father had never hugged him, which obviously he thinks is strange. There were some surprising comments in the interview, particularly when it came to his relations with his brother Prince William and his sister-in-law Catherine. He talked about how you know, he'd sort of been the third wheel in that um, relationship when he used to um, undertake engagements with them. And we always saw them as, um, you know, very jolly, threesome, always laughing and joking and that sort of thing. And he said sometimes it was fun, but, you know, other times less so. And there seemed to be lingering resentments there that he wasn't happy with that. And then, according to this interview, you know, everything changed when Meghan arrived. And he talked about how, in his opinion, William and Catherine sort of had an instant dislike of Meghan, that they never really got on. And it all became quite strange as to why. He um, blamed stereotypes. You know, Tom Bradby pulled him up on this. He said, well, what do you mean? Because there's certainly a racial element to that. And he said, you know, Meghan was the American actress. She, you know, she was divorced. Um, she was um, mixed race. And this seemed to me, seemed to be strange. It's like he almost can't accept that um, William and Catherine may not have liked Meghan. They may have, from all their dealings with her, you know, they were living round the corner, they um, had, you know, lots of dealings with her by all accounts, just d didn't really like her or were suspicious about her. You know, that may be nothing to do with stereotypes. It may have been um, their, their judgment. But he seems to have trouble accepting that. And we saw this later as well when he talks about this now infamous fight, um, well, not really a fight because he said he didn't fight back, but this assault by Prince William on him at Nottingham Cottage in the grounds of Kensington Palace. Obviously, this was meant to be a huge scoop from the programme last night, but in fact, we'd heard about it from the leaks last week. And, you know, why did it happen? That's the key thing. He says that um, William was, you know, had been reading all these reports in the press about Duchess difficult and stuff like that, but but look at when it happened. I think he's saying it was sort of 2018, 2019. There, there'd been hardly any negative reports at that point about Meghan at all. It was just just a handful. You know, again, he seems unwilling to accept that William might have been um, coming to that these conclusions based on what he'd heard from his own staff that they shared together. And this is at the time when these bullying allegations were. Um, starting to be made that William was hearing about them and also from his own experience and Meghan but no it was all the press it was the British press you know it's, it seems to be sort of obsessed everything is seen through his loathing of the press now today Monday is the Princess of Wales's birthday so all I can say is I hope she didn't watch this interview last night um, because Harry seemed determined to sort of change views of um, Catherine and really trash her reputation in, in many ways, I would say, that, you know, he, he, given these extraordinary details of the most intimate conversations that they had, that obviously no one would ever expect to be made public. And one of the most um, dramatic accounts was when um, he and Meghan had popped round for, I think it was coffee and biscuits, you know, around in Kensington Palace. And I think it was they were trying to make up, it was after the wedding and after there'd been the row about the bridesmaids' dresses and this type of thing. It was seen as an opportunity to sort of mend fences and have a jolly chat. But that's when it all seemed to go horribly wrong. And then they seemed to argue about sort of lingering resentments. Catherine mentioned how she'd been upset by a comment that Meghan had made about her baby brain. I think when she was pregnant, she'd sort of made a joke about her forgetfulness. And Catherine felt that wasn't really a sort of appropriate comment to make from someone she, you know, didn't really know that well. 
So it all seemed to be a sort of misunderstanding, but what came across was just Harry's desire to change the image that we have of Catherine. So, you know, we have this image of her being very poised, elegant, calm, that sort of thing. But no, no, he's saying she was you know, so angry, she was gripping the edge of the furniture so hard that her knuckles were going white. You know, my goodness, he's sort of, you know, he's saying William attacked him and then it makes it sound like, you know, Catherine wanted to strangle Meghan. It was really um, dramatic stuff. What came across strongly from the interview was Harry's real dislike of um, Camilla. Now, he only ever referred to her as, you know, my stepmother, and he almost felt like he wanted to sort of insert my wicked stepmother. And it was almost pantomime. He almost sort of felt like he wanted booze as soon as her name was mentioned. But it was entirely negative. We had, um, you know, him talking about how him and William didn't want um, their father to marry her. That's made clear in the book. He had to accept grudgingly that she made his father happy and that um, they were content for the marriage to happen because they wanted their father to be happy. But the real dispute um, between Harry and Camilla seems to have been um, that, according to him, she wanted a good press because, you know, she's always had very hostile um, coverage as um, his father's mistress and that, you know, she wants to rehabilitate her image and he felt that he suffered because of that. And that, that seemed to be a lot of the lingering resentment. He gave some concrete examples. There was one where it had been a um, conversation between um, Prince William and Camilla, and it was only they um, who were present. Now then this was leaked in the press as evidence of um, you know, William getting on with his stepmother or sort of giving his consent to the relationship. And, um, Harry was adamant that, you know, William didn't tell a, a soul about it, so it must have come um, via Camilla. Now, I don't know the ins and outs of that, but it seems there's a lot of lingering resentments there, and, you know, my goodness, it's going to be hard to patch things up with his stepmother in the future. Another really interesting aspect of this interview it is the image that he's giving of Camilla and her ambitions, because the image we've always had of Camilla, really, is that she never, she was quite sort of content being a mistress. She never really wanted to be queen, you know, with all the, the work that entails, and particularly in later life, and it was something she sort of accepted reluctantly. But oh no, according to Prince Harry, she was desperate for, for the crown. You know, he talks about this all sort of part of her sort of manoeuvring in, in terms of becoming queen, and that's what she was desperate for. Now, who, who knows the truth? Certainly, there'll be very different views. Um, but this is the problem with this interview, that it's it's so one-sided. I mean, look, to give the viewers some perspective, any time we write articles about people, we have a duty to contact them first, to let them put their side. And in the case of Harry and Meghan, oh my goodness, you know, you have to give them lots of time. They get their lawyers to come back to you at shillings, often complain, no, no, you've only given us 24 hours. That's not enough. We need more time to address these allegations. And this is what goes on for, for journalists. But here you have Harry writing a whole book. No one has seen it before. He hasn't given anyone a chance to put their side of things. And if they had, I'm sure they would say either this didn't happen or that's a very different version of events. So, you know, he's, he's really guilty of everything that he accuses the press of. That's what's so disturbing about it. There was another real pointed dig at his um, stepmother when he was talking about the Jeremy Clarkson row and the very controversial column that um, Clarkson had written criticising Meghan. And he talks about how um, it's sort of likely to increase the threat of domestic violence and this sort of thing. And then he mentions about how his stepmother campaigns against domestic violence. Well, obviously what he was very aware of was that Camilla had had lunch with Clarkson. She attended a lunch um, the day before he wrote that column. So I think that was another real dig at her. But the racial stuff is very interesting as well from this interview. He talked about Ngozi Falani, the um, domestic violence um, campaigner who'd been at a reception at Buckingham Palace and had this race row with Lady Susan Hussey, the Queen Elizabeth's long-serving aide. And I think he used that as an example of how they invited Ngozi Falani back to the palace to try and sort of have a reconciliation. And he really wanted that sort of reconciliation himself. I think he envisages 
sort of getting around the table at the palace and them saying sorry and what they're going to do to make amends to Harry and Meghan. But oh my goodness, it's just, he, he doesn't accept that, you know, he and Meghan are the ones that have done so many things wrong. I mean, when it comes to reconciliation with the royal family, at one point, Harry had the cheek to say that he hopes that any conversations he had um, would remain private and wouldn't be leaked. I mean, how, how dare he? Here he is giving, you know, actually revealing um, the contents of his conversation with his father that his father made, you know, at the funeral of his own father, Prince Philip. And he's put that in a book a few months later. And he's given everything. So the, the idea that, you know, he should be worried about stuff remaining private is, is really extraordinary. I mean, Harry recounts details of a conversation with his brother at Prince Philip's funeral, where, um, again, William was very heated, according to Harry. And he, I think he grabbed him at one point and said, you know, I only want you to be happy. And he said, I swear on our mother's life. And Harry said that's a big thing because they've only ever used that phrase, you know, swearing on their mother's life for really serious subjects. And he said, I think William was lying, that he doesn't want the best for him. You know, when he says things like that, how do they recover from that? When it comes to reconciliation, I think ugh, that's going to take a long time, isn't it? I mean, certainly, I think they will be invited to events in the future, and the king will want to show he's magnanimous, that he loves his son. Um, Harry stressed in his interview how much he still loved his family, that sort of thing. But there won't be this apology or reconciliation that he wants. And I think they'd be extremely wary of um, saying anything to him. You know, he described the day after his grandmother, the Queen's death, as, you know, really horrible, the way that the family treated him. But that's because they're scared. They can't deal with him. Anything he says, they don't want to be on a, a flight with him, just, you know, recounting um, intimate moments, because they suspect that will appear in another Netflix series or something. There was a very interesting development at the weekend that the Sunday Times revealed that the King is changing the coronation service so that the royal dukes won't all be swearing allegiance to the, to the King, to the new monarch. It will only be um, Prince William who will be doing that. And, you know, this was interpreted as, oh, it's a snub, it means Harry won't be involved in the ceremony. But I actually think the opposite. It's another olive branch because it means that Harry can attend the coronation and as a spectator, really, he won't really have to sort of swear all that loyalty. He'll just have to attend and he would be able to um, sit with Meghan. So I think it makes it much more likely um, that we'll see him at the coronation. But I'm afraid until then, there's going to be a lot more of will they, won't they? Thanks for watching. On Thursdays, don't forget to tune into Palace Confidential, your weekly look at all things royal.